Hi everyone, welcome to another Sunday Zoom meeting and another podcast episode. And welcome to all 115 participants that are live with us at the moment. Uh, Let me just um, mute everyone because I forgot to do that. Done. Um, Okay, guys, I had more of a kind of a general chat in mind today. So let's see where it takes us. Um, I, I I guess it's sort of, it's prompted by, I guess, some of the, the questions and the discussion in the group yesterday and today. And how shall we, how shall we get into this? Let's put it this way. Everyone, all of us here are looking for happiness. We're looking for a happiness that's not tainted with sorrow or loss or pain or regret. And that's motivating everything that we do. And it's the reason why we are core students. It's the reason we're interested in a spiritual path because we have come to a point in our life where we realize um, that we have gotten to the age that we are, 40, 50, 60, 70, and we still haven't found a lasting, sustained happiness without the taint of sorrow, loss, or pain. And I think when you get to around about 45 or 50, you realize that that journey you've taken up until this point out into the world to try and tame it and control it and bend it to your will in order to be happy hasn't actually worked. And I think it's at that point that we're ready to change the direction of the journey from outwards to inwards. And so What we're looking for is this sustained happiness. And the huge mistake is that we're looking for it in people and in things, in acquisitions. Now, the truth is that our natural state, how we are as God created us, is one of peace joy, love, and abundance. And that state is heaven. It's the oneness of God and Christ. One will, united for eternity. And that state, it is available to us in consciousness. Because we still have the memory of what it is. And we call that in the course, the Holy Spirit, the memory of God and Christ as one. So that natural state, which is still available to us in consciousness as the Holy Spirit, that state of peace, joy, love, abundance. Um. What we've done is we have attacked our true nature. In order to identify as something that we're not. Which is separate. And so over that state of peace, joy, abundance, unlimitedness. Over that state, we have superimposed the limitation and lack of ego. So as soon as we've attacked our nature, identified as what we're not, which is a separate self, we plunge into the lack and the need 
and the self-loathing of separateness. And then comes the attachments and the aversions, the cravings and the addictions, the needs and the wants. And all of those attachments and aversions are covering over the natural joy of our being. Now, you can't change what you are, the natural joy of your being. You are as God created you. There's nothing you can do to mess that up. But you can veil your true nature from yourself by identifying as something that you're not. But you can't change your nature. You can't change the joy of your being. As Jesus says in lesson 93, light and joy and peace abide in you because God put them there. What well, you can't get rid of them. You can't change them. You can't erase them. But you can cover them over. You can veil the truth of who you are from yourself by identifying with something that you're not. An ego, a separate self, a body, an insane voice talking to itself. And what we call a body and an insane voice talking to itself is a person. So you can identify as a person, a separate self cut off from the whole, um, but you can't make it true. And it has no effect on what you are as God created you. And so the truth of what you are is in your mind right now. And if you could just stop your thoughts and the feelings that are happening as a result of them, you would feel your beingness, what you are in the Holy Spirit. And you would know your oneness with everything. And our problem is that we think our thoughts and feelings are what we are. Because we're veiling what we are from ourselves with our thoughts and feelings. So everyone is looking for lasting happiness with no taint of pain. And this is nothing but a desire to know again the wholeness of our true nature. So everything you are doing in your life at its core, what you're doing and looking from it is to know the wholeness and the abundance and the unlimitedness of what you truly are. Now, it's not going to work <laughs> uh, because the mistake, once we identify it as an ego, is looking for this happiness in things and people, and it's not there. Happiness or pleasure in life is nothing more than a relief from the lack of identifying as an ego. Now, we assumed this lack. There is no lack, lack in God, and therefore there is no lack in the Holy Spirit, which is the memory of God and Christ as one in consciousness. There's no lack there. Now, the challenge is... Once we identify as an ego, now we know nothing but lack and we attempt to try and fill ourselves up. And we do that with our special love relationships where we try to cannibalize the essence of other people to feel like we have worth, to feel like we have more, that we are more, that we're more complete. Um, and we seek out our ambitions and our goals and what we want to do. And, and all of it is to try and all of it is to try and survive as an ego. And when we do no moments of happiness in life, 
It's not because of people or situations or circumstances. It is because as an ego, getting what we think we need to be more whole, for just a moment, we let go of identifying with our thoughts. Either they stop or they become much less frequent or we're just not identifying with them. And our beingness shines in our mind. We experience the truth of what we are. And it's a feeling of expansiveness and stillness and peace. It is a pure beingness. And even if there is some thought activity going on, this beingness is the background, the background track to it. And it feels exhilarating and it feels like love. And it feels like an all is wellness. And we all have those moments at different times in our life. It could be when we fall in love. Uh, it could be holding our, our first child. It could be in our favorite place in nature. And the happiness has nothing to do with the outer circumstances. It has to do with the, the ego feeling, it, feeling like it's fulfilled a need or a want. And in getting what it thinks it wants, it falls still for a moment. Thinking falls still. And beingness makes itself known. And that's what all happiness in life is. Which means the truth is that we need life to be nothing at all in particular in order to be happy. Because happiness is always something that's happening in our mind. And it's the touching into our true nature as beingness, as awareness. Not the person. The person is the body and the insane voice talking to itself. It is touching into what we are that's not that. A pure beingness. And that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. So nobody has to study A Course in Miracles to have the idea of what the Holy Spirit is. Anytime you have those moments in your life where your thoughts just slow down, stop, or where you're not identifying with them, and a sense of spaciousness and peace arises within you, that's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is nothing but the memory of God and Christ as one. And that's what's happening in your mind. In that experience of a pure beingness, a present moment awareness, where thoughts are not dragging us from the present moment. And so Jesus is saying to us in the course, you know, you looking outside of yourself for happiness, it's not going to work. Because when we get what we think we want outside of us, the thoughts only stop for a few moments. You know, you might knock half an hour out of it. You know, you could go see a movie and walk out with this exhilarated feeling afterwards. And it's there as the background to whatever thoughts are happening. Just this feeling of exhilaration. But it's not going to last. After a while, the thoughts come back and we lose ourselves to the thoughts again. And we think we're a person and not beingness. So we make this limitation 
um, Jesus calls it the self that we have made, this concept of a self that stands like a shield before the light. And it's nothing but a thought made self. We make this limitation and lack, and then comes desire that the limitation and lack be addressed or filled. And when the desire is fulfilled, our thoughts temporarily stop. And when the mind is still, our intrinsic nature, what we call the Holy Spirit, it shines forth in our mind. So unhappiness in life is nothing but your non-awareness of your beingness. You've lost yourself to the person, the story, the body and the insane voice talking to itself. You don't know your beingness and therefore you don't know the joy and wholeness and love of what you are. And all your activity is trying to get back to the pure beingness. All entertainment has that purpose. Movies, shows, hobbies, pastimes, interests, all of it is to try and have that moment where your thoughts stop and you feel the exhilaration of being. Music. Anything with a beauty to it, where just a moment of appreciation means our thoughts are going to stop or we're going to stop identifying with them and, and our beingness comes into our awareness. And there's a feeling of exhilaration. You know, it could be when you won the football cup. <laughs> Could be when your team won the football cup. It doesn't matter. In that moment, what was happening in life has nothing to do with what you're feeling. It's just that your thoughts stopped or you stopped making them important or losing yourself in them. And for a moment, you found yourself as beingness. And so in truth, every single thought you have is a lie about yourself. It's a limitation of what you are. Because what you are is pure being. And the truth of that pure being is that the pure being I feel myself as in moments of exhilaration is the same being that's in you. And everyone. And animals. And plants. And the oceans and rocks. There's just one beingness. And that beingness, that awareness, is the dreamer of the dream. It is that which is dreaming itself to be everything. You. But we don't know that because we're identifying as a person. We think our thoughts and feelings are who we are. And they are the shield blocking from us the light of what we are. As Jesus says, it keeps the light from everything that you see. The light that you are is beingness. Um, as early as lesson four, sure some people are listening going, my God, that's a little bit advanced. <laughs> as early as lesson four, Jesus tells us these thoughts do not mean anything. Nothing. Further in the lesson, he says, do not be afraid to use good thoughts in inverted commas as well as bad thoughts in inverted commas. He's implying here they're the same thing. None of them represent your real thoughts. 
which are being covered over by them. The good ones, again, inverted commas, are but shadows of what lies beyond. And shadows make sight difficult. And the bad ones are blocks to sight and make seeing impossible. And you do not want either. So listen to what Jesus is saying. He's saying, you're not your thoughts. None of them. The good ones, inverted commas, are a pale reflection of what you are as beingness. And the bad ones are a complete block to your knowing of the joy of what you are as present moment awareness, as beingness. As he moves through the lessons, he tells us, um, that was lesson four. Ah, I won't go digging it out. Um, but he says in a later lesson, I'm guessing it might be um, lesson eight, but he tells us that um, when you think you're thinking, your mind's actually blank. And he, and he asks us to understand that, you know, to, that when we're thinking, instead of believing something's actually happening, to understand that it's just a blank. Like, the thoughts don't mean anything. Nothing. Our opinions don't mean anything. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Meaningless. Jesus says, you're not even really thinking. What you should understand is that it's simply a block. Whatever thoughts are going on in your mind are a block to what you are as beingness, which is the Holy Spirit. Beingness is what is everything and is therefore omniscient, all-knowing. You know, Jesus says in the Course, uh, very few people can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit because of the voice of their specialness. Well, the specialness is your thoughts about who you are and what you need and what people think of you and what a good ego you are. <laughs> That's your specialness. What a good thing you did today. And it was amazing. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Nothing. And as long as you're listening to that, as long as you think that's you, as long as you think that's important or your opinions matter about anything, well, there's no ability to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that's beingness. Beingness, which is everything and all-knowing. In the Song of Prayer, when Jesus is talking about getting the advice and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, he gives us that really important analogy of the song. And so he tells us that the real voice of the Holy Spirit is a song of thanksgiving and love. And the echo is knowing what to do in every situation, how to fix every problem in the world. What to do that is the most loving, helpful and effective thing for everyone in the situation. And he tells us you cannot ask for the echo. So you can't identify as this insane voice talking to itself in your mind and then go, 
tell me what to do, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Jesus is saying, you can't hear it. He says, you have to hear the song first. And you've heard the song before. It's those moments of exhilaration in your life where your thinking stopped and you felt your beingness. That's the song. There's nobody here hasn't heard that song at some point in their life. I don't care if it was when you won the swimming relay. That moment that shocked your thoughts into stopping. There was an exhilaration within you, which is the song Jesus is talking about, the Holy Spirit. And what Jesus is saying to us is, you know, the whole course is about learning to let your thoughts go. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> the good ones and the bad ones. Your opinions are all blocking from you the all-knowingness of the Holy Spirit. Everything we think we know is a block to the all-knowingness of the Holy Spirit. And our course process is learning to bring all of our thoughts, beliefs, and feelings to the Holy Spirit so we can let them go. So we can know that's not me. I am awareness, and that's what I'm aware of, that thought, that need, that want, that belief, uh, which is veiling from me the wholeness of the Holy Spirit the happiness of what I'm truly at. So our forgiveness process is looking with the Holy Spirit. So the thoughts and feelings can be undone, so they can be let go of. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to add anything to ourselves to return to our natural state, which is, represented in consciousness by the Holy Spirit, pure beingness. There is nothing to do. You are already that. The problem is that there's a program playing over that. And it's your opinions and your wants and your needs <laughs> and your thoughts and your feelings. And it's not you. You're the beingness. And so this is a process of looking at what we're not with the Holy Spirit, which means with no judgment, non-interference with it, complete allowing, a welcoming of what is, in order that we can let it go and know ourselves as none of that. To feel what it is as beingness having let go of all of the concepts. You know, my need to be happy veils from me that I'm already happy. You know, my unhappiness with how I look veils from me the, the glory of my beingness. My wanting to have the approval of others as an ego is veiling from me the complete, you know, abundance and oneness of what I am. All the striving and the resisting and the attachments and the aversions are veiling from me what I am as beingness. I have to let them go. 
And the course process is that you, you look without judgment at how much you don't want to let them go. And you completely and totally forgive yourself for that. And the power and the beauty and the simplicity of non-resistance, non-judgment, allowing, welcoming. The power of that is that it separates what you are from your thoughts and feelings. Instead of you identified with your thoughts and feelings, going, where's awareness? <laughs> where's the Holy Spirit? Well, that's not going to work. You know, you're identified as the ego going, where's the Holy Spirit? Well, the ego can't have any kind of interaction or relationship or knowledge of the Holy Spirit. You know, you, the person, you, the separate self, that's the ego. All your opinions and your thoughts and your wants and what you think and all of that ego. And you can't be that and then go, where's the Holy Spirit? But what you can do is you can allow your mind and body to do exactly what it's doing without judgment. You can welcome whatever your ego is doing in this moment. Allow it, not interfere with it in the slightest. And in that, you're no longer the ego. You are the awareness of thoughts and feelings happening. You are the beingness. And when you experience what you are as beingness, you can let those thoughts and feelings go. And what's left is a deeper experience of falling backwards into beingness. Stillness. And that's what our course practice is about, people. You know, we've all gone through our phase where we thought this was about being a holy ego. <laughs> you know, ascending <laughs> as a separate self. Um, that Keith would become enlightened. Um, and instead, it's learning that Keith is the activity that's veiling enlightenment from me that's already there. I already am being this. My only problem is that I'm deluded into thinking I am this separate self with a past and with lack and need and want. You know, all unhappiness in life is thwarted ego need. That's all unhappiness is, is a thwarted ego need. But Jesus says there's one problem and there's one solution. The one problem is that you think you're separate. You think you're the ego. And the one solution is you let go of identifying as an ego to know what you are in the Holy Spirit. But again, the course process is you have to look at the error so you can let it go. The way we choose the Holy Spirit is not by staying in ego and go, let me choose the Holy Spirit. No, no, you have to look at the ego without judgment in order to let go of identifying as an ego. And when you do that, you experience yourself as beingness, as awareness.
Now, again, I, I want to reiterate that that state of knowing yourself, what you are in the Holy Spirit, you've had that. Anytime you felt exhilarated in life, whatever it was, you just stopped identifying with thoughts in your mind and felt beingness. That's why Jesus says in this lovely um, section of the course in chapter 11 to Helen, um, let me see if I can find it. Actually, maybe, yeah, actually chapter, chapter five is the same sentiment, but this is, this one's lovely because Helen was talking to Jesus about how unhappy she was and how she suffers. And Jesus said, um, this is section four, uh, teaching and healing. He said, how can you, Helen, who are so holy, suffer? All your past except its beauty is gone and nothing is left but a blessing. I have saved all your kindnesses and every loving thought you ever had. I've purified them of the errors that hid their light and kept them for you in their own perfect radiance. They are beyond destruction and beyond guilt. They came from the Holy Spirit, beingness, within you. And we know what God creates is eternal. Now, again, this is why I want to say to you that any happiness or joy that we have in life is a falling away of what we're not, a, a, a sort of a letting go of the misidentification that's going on and the knowing of what you are. So, you know, that's, that's real. That's what's true. And that's what Jesus is saying to Helen. Like any time you've ever been happy in life, you know, it, it seems like what happens is that an ego desire was satisfied. It seems like you've triumphed over God and been happy in the world. <laughs> you've gotten what you think you need or someone loves you and you finally feel lovable. Um, you know, that, that that's the circumstances. But what happens in all those situations is the exact same thing. You stop identifying with your thoughts and you feel your beingness. And there is peace, joy, and love there. It's not there because someone loves you. It's not there because you won the swimming relay. It's not there because your football team won. It's there because it's who you are. And that's what Jesus means when he says to Helen, I have purified them of the errors that hid their light. Now, the errors that hid their light are the circumstances that we think cause them, cause the loving thought. In the same way, um, when Jesus says to us in lesson four, do not be afraid to use good thoughts as well as bad. None of them represent your real thoughts, which are being covered over by them. The good ones are but shadows of what lies beyond. So again, you know, that's that's kind of what needs the purification there. We don't want to think that, you know, thoughts about world peace make me feel happiness. No, they don't. When you think about world peace, um, you stop identifying with your thoughts for a minute and the happiness of what you are emerges. But it's got nothing to do with world peace. So it's very important as we practice the course. <laughs> Yeah, Danny wrote in the chat box, so I'm never happy for the reason I think. Very good, Danny. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. I'm never upset for the reason I think. I'm upset because I am identified with thoughts and feelings. Ego. And I'm never happiness for the, I'm never happy for the reason I think. 
because there's no cause in the world. Just one of my ego desires seems to get fulfilled. And for five minutes, I will stop identifying with thoughts and feel the, the beingness of what I am. Very good. <laughs> Love that. Um, yeah, that's absolutely the message. So unhappiness is when you don't know that you are beingness. You think you're a person. You think you are the lacking thing, the big black hole of neediness and want and self-loathing that's trying to fill itself. That's what unhappiness is. And happiness is when you stop identifying with that. And the minute you stop identifying with that neediness and want, that limitation that we've created, you can know what you are. The Holy Spirit. Beingness. And that's why, as we're practicing our forgiveness, it is so important that we understand that we, we allow whatever is coming up. That we welcome it. Because only in the complete non-resistance to what's coming up can what you are as beingness separate itself from ego. And as beingness, you can let it go. The lack and the need and the want and the limitation is just what you're holding in your fist as beingness. But you think you are it. You think you are the fist with the limitation and the want and the need and the unhappiness. But if you remember that you're not that, you're not your thoughts, you're not the feelings, none of that's you. If you remember what you are, and to do that, all you have to do is not resist, allow and welcome. In that, you know yourself as beingness. And as beingness, you just let go. There's no way we can let go of painful thoughts and feelings as a person. You're having those painful thoughts and feelings because you think you're a person. <laughs> That's the only reason they're there. So as a person, I can't go, let me let those go. Because <laughs> the unhappiness is the unhappiness of being separate. And so instead, when I allow non-resistance, non-interference to what the ego is doing, I feel what I am as beingness. What I am as the welcome, as the open heart, as a pure awareness. Every thought, every feeling melts before what you are as beingness and the Holy Spirit. And as it does, you feel a deeper awareness of what you are as that beingness, not the person, not the body or the mad thoughts. You experience more deeply what you are as beingness. And our task is to keep doing that. Allow and welcome every limiting thought and feeling so we can let it go in the Holy Spirit. And we keep doing that until there are no more thoughts or feelings. 
Now there's just beingness. Omniscience. Which means you never have to look into the past to see what you did before and what you should do now based on what happened. Now you just know exactly what to do in every moment. You just know. That's the real world. That's the echo of the song. The song is your beingness. You're not a body. You're eternal. You're unlimited. You could want for nothing. You are the same beingness that is in everything. That's the oneness. And by letting go of all your opinions and thoughts <laughs> and ideas and concepts, by letting them all go, Jesus says salvation is nothing more than the escape from concepts. By letting them all go, what do you get? Omniscience in the Holy Spirit. Never having to think again, because whatever thought you need just comes into your mind. That's the echo. And you know, the entire world is you as beingness. Beingness, the present moment, is that within which everything is happening, by which everything is known, and out of which everything is made. And it's all you as beingness. That's the oneness. There's never any separateness. That's why we do forgiveness. So as you live your life, you know, you're going to have <laughs> um, awful emotions and feelings come up at you during the daytime. Super. Brilliant. That's what you've been clenching, thinking it's you. And this is your next lesson in your classroom. Let this go. How do I do that? I, I look at how much I don't want to let it go. And I completely forgive myself. I allow and welcome all those awful thoughts and feelings. Completely allow them. Welcome them. Now I feel my beingness. And they can't stand against it. I can let go of my identification as that ego. As I stand in what I am as beingness. So I think it's really important to understand that whatever ego thoughts and emotions are coming up in you during the daytime, brilliant. You're not failing the course. Doesn't mean something's gone wrong. <laughs> means here's your opportunity to let go of what you're not, to let go of limitation. And again, how do you let it go? You look at how much you don't want to let it go. And you forgive yourself, non-judgment, non-interference, allowing, welcoming. It's all that's required to feel what you are that's not that. And as you feel what you are, that's not the person, you can let the needs, wants, desires, traumas, upsets, <laughs> anger, hatreds <laughs> of the person go. That's what your whole day should be doing. Look what's come up. Great. Let me let this go. And do that all the way to the real world. Till there's no more thoughts and feelings. Just a still mind. Jesus says the memory of God comes to the quiet mind. How do you get a quiet mind? You have to keep letting go. All your thoughts, all your concepts, all your ideas, they're all wrong. Every single one of them is wrong. Every one of them is a lie about what you are. And if you allow them, if you welcome them, 
non-resistance, non-interference, allowing. You separate yourself out from what the ego is. The only reason you have any problems is because you're identified as the ego. The big black hole of want. And any time you allow, welcome, don't interfere, let be, any time you do that, you separate out from the ego. Now you're not the ego. You are what is aware of the ego, but not the ego. And you can let it go. But it has to begin with forgiving yourself for not wanting to let it go. That's how it begins. That's the course process. How do you let the ego go? You forgive yourself for not wanting to let it go. And suddenly, what you are separates from the ego. And the gates of the hell we made cannot stand against what you are as being this. All darkness will crumble. So guys, that's our process. That's what I do every single day of my life. So I am not this enlightened being that never has any upsetting thoughts or emotions. Uh, that is not true. Um, I am working on this every single day. Um, but they don't last because I let them go. And my job and my burning ambition and goal for life is to keep letting go until there's nothing left. So that's what I see as my job to do in order to fulfill what the course is teaching us and that's what i want to convey to you <laughs> so you know even i twisted funny in the shower after the gym the other week and sort of really hurt myself <laughs> and um, when something like that happens the first thing you have to do is understand this is perfect non-resistance, non-interference, non-judgment, allowing, welcoming. Yeah, so my ego, because of its guilt, <laughs> chose to hurt itself, to punish itself. Yeah, that's what egos do. It's perfect. It's now the perfect lesson for me through non-resistance, non-interference, allowing, welcoming to experience what I am that's not the body, that's not the ego. You know, when someone almost sort of runs me over trying to pass me in the queue down the stairs from the bus or something like that, I have the moment of hatred. Um. But that hatred is only there because I'm identified as an ego. And I'm trying to survive as an ego. And in order for me to survive as an ego, I need people to treat me with respect. I need to make sure someone doesn't get one over on me so I can feel good about an e uh, myself as an ego. So again, when something like that happens, the flash of hatred is there, same way as it is for you. Um, but can I allow it? Can I welcome that hatred to be there? Born out of a need to be validated as an ego. And can I let the need to be respected as an ego go in order to know myself as beingness, as awareness. And I can. 
And each time I do, I feel my identity as beingness. Until the next flash of irritation or hatred means I got to wash, rinse, repeat. That's your task. You know, let's get on with it. At some point, you're going to let all your thoughts and your feelings and your stories go and know yourself as the beingness that you are. Jesus says the script is written. <laughs> okay, so at some stage, that's going to happen. Why not now? Why not end the suffering <laughs> of procrastination? Being a person sucks. You spent your whole life trying to make being a person good. <laughs> it doesn't work. It's never good. All your pleasure is just a temporary reprieve from your suffering of separateness. Right. I've been talking for an hour. <laughs> Let's throw it open for discussion. Uh, if you'd like to say something, put your hand virtually in the air and we'll come to you. And Eli, is there anything to discuss in the chat box? Yes. Our first question in the chat comes from Donna Armstrong. She mm -hmm. says, the echo is what? So the song Jesus talks about in the song of prayer is the peace, love, joy of God and Christ as one, which is the Holy Spirit. Why don't we dig out the, let's dig out the quote, because it's beautiful. Um, Doody doody do. So anyone on the podcast doesn't think we've gone off air. I'm doing a service in the book. Okay, ask for the echo. Right, so this is the song of prayer. And it's in the section true prayer. You have been told the Holy Spirit to ask the Holy Spirit for the answer to any specific problem and that you will receive a specific answer if such is your need. You have also been told that there is only one problem and one answer. In prayer, this is not contradictory. There are decisions to make here and they must be made whether they are illusions or not. You cannot be asked to accept answers which are beyond the level of need that you can recognize. Therefore, it is not the form of the question that matters, nor how it's asked. The form of the question, if given by God, sorry, the form of the answer, if given by God, will suit your need as you see it. This is merely the echo of the reply of his voice. The real sound is always a sound of thanksgiving and love. So Jesus is saying, you have to return to the beingness you are, not the person. And to feel that you, to feel that abundance, to feel the fact that you don't need anything, you return to that in the Holy Spirit. So, you know, if you're going, well, I need to find a job. While well, Jesus is saying, that's an echo, knowing where to look, who to call, who to talk to, uh, how to go about it, um, how to answer the questions in the interview. That's an echo. You have to hear the song first. And the song is knowing that your happiness has got nothing to do with whether you have a job or not, whether you live in a house or under a bridge. 
your happiness is only ever the experience of the beingness of what you are. And so once we let go of these ego needs and wants for things like security and approval, um, happiness, we, we let those go and go back to beingness and feel the peace, joy, and love of being in the Holy Spirit, not the person. Then Jesus is saying you can have the echo, which is just the omniscience of the Holy Spirit. Just knowing what to say or do that will be the most helpful, effective, and loving thing to do for everyone connected with a situation. So Jesus continues, you cannot then ask for the echo. It's the song that's the gift. Along with it come the overtones, the harmonics, the echoes, but these are secondary. In true prayer, you hear only the song. All the rest is merely added. You have sought first the kingdom of heaven, which is beingness, and all else has indeed been given you. So that's our section there. Um, anything else in the chat box, Eli? Yeah, so next is from Jennifer Harvey. Uh, she says, so is there in fact no filtering on our part of whether thoughts are ego or Holy Spirit? Thoughts we have from the Holy Spirit. Now, again, let me stress, Jesus says very few people hear these. <laughs> you know? A lot of people think they hear them. <laughs> and it's just their ego and their Halloween costume. Jesus says to hear this, you know, you've got to disregard the voice of your specialness. No, I, I can't go to, <laughs> what's a good example? I can't have my preferred interpretation of Course in Miracles and hold on to that and then ask the Holy Spirit how it compares with others. Because I have my specialness. I've already decided what's true. I just want the Holy Spirit to confirm it for me. And he will. Because it's not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's the unholy one. It's the ego in the Halloween costume going, of course you're right as an ego. Yes, your opinions are valid. Of course they are. And yes, of course you know better than somebody else. Um, When we have information that comes from the Holy Spirit, it comes in on a knowingness and a peace. And it is definitely not going to be criticizing someone else or you being better than somebody else or how to triumph over somebody else um, or how to make dirt of somebody else. It's going to be nothing like that. Something that comes from the Holy Spirit is the most loving, helpful and effective thing to do in the situation for everyone concerned. No winners or losers. That's how you know something coming from the Holy Spirit. Because there's no self-interest in it. It's got nothing to do with me as an ego. It has to do with what's the most loving and effective thing to do in the circumstance for everyone concerned. How can I feel myself as not separate from the people and the situation? And in terms of something like, you know, where's the right place to look for a job? Who do I talk to? How do I have the opportunity come to me? Again, there would be a peaceful knowingness in that. There wouldn't be anxiety and angst like there would if I was trying to make a decision as an ego. Hope that makes sense. Anything else in the chat box, Eli? Yes, let's do one more from 
Kirsty, and then we can go to Sherry. So okay. from Kirsty in the chat, I have, um, I know this is a Bible quote, not a course quote, quote, but is relevant here. Jesus says, those who are well have no need of a physician. This is surely the great problem. Then we cannot hear the voice until we let go of our specialness. But once we let go of it, all we don't really let go of it all, sorry, we don't really need to hear the voice. It's when we're confused and fear, fearful, separated, that we need to hear it guiding our steps. So the question okay. is, what, what yes. gives? I, yes. I'm never upset for the reason I think. You are not upset and confused because of the circumstances in your life. You are upset and confused because you think you're something you're not. You who are unlimited. You who are beingness. Think you are something you're not. And you feel terrible lack and vulnerability and fear and self-loathing and hatred. And now... You think it's important what happens in the world so that you can feel better as an ego. But the problem isn't what's happening. The problem is you think you're an ego. One problem, one solution to every problem, because they're all the same. If you're upset, it's because you're identifying as something you're not. So what's the one solution to every problem? Look at the problem so you can choose against it, being an ego, and identify with what you are in the Holy Spirit. Now, there's no more problem. There are circumstances, but it's not a problem because your happiness was never going to come from how the circumstances turned out. Your happiness was only ever going to be you feeling your beingness in the Holy Spirit. So when you're feeling all like upset and confused and distraught in your life, it's got nothing to do with your life. It's because you don't know what you are. You're identifying with what you're not. So of course you're trying to manipulate and make the world go a certain way so you can be a happy ego. But Jesus is saying, but you've only got one problem. You think you're an ego. You think you're a separate self. Let me look at that with you. <laughs> Let's welcome it. Let's not fight it. Let's allow it to be there, all that mess. Let's not interfere with it. <laughs> Let's welcome it. And in the welcome, you realize I'm not the mess. Now your one problem is fixed and your happiness is taken care of. And now you'll just know what to do in the circumstances. So the answer to that question is really important. I am never upset for the reason I think. The only reason you're upset, it's not because your life is messy. The only reason you're upset is because you think you're an ego. And so you address that by letting it go and being what you are in the Holy Spirit and feeling the peace of what you are as awareness, as stillness, as beingness. Where you've access to the om omniscience of the Holy Spirit and you just know what the right things to do are. Um, so again, staying in the mess thinking, if I fix the mess, I'll be happy. <laughs> it's the reason why I'm unhappy instead of knowing I'm an ego. Um, that's looking for the echo. How do I fix the mess to be happy? Okay, instead, listen to the song. And the song is knowing the mess isn't you. As soon as you remember what you are, the mess vanishes. Now there's no more problem. It's just a life circumstance. And you know what to do.
That's one of the most important lines in the course. I am never upset for the reason I think. That's the smokescreen. That's the lie. You've identified as the limitation. And now you think the problem is how you undo your limitation as an ego, how you can add to yourself as an ego. If only someone will love me. If only I had more money. If only people respected me. If only I wasn't so lonely. None of those things are the reason you're upset. All of those things are problems for an ego that doesn't exist, a separate self that doesn't exist. Your beingness. The one who suffers and feels the lack is a concept you've made up, but it doesn't exist. And so the only problem you ever have is that you're identifying as something you're not, which doesn't actually exist. You're identified with an illusion, a dream of yourself. And you think by manipulating the dream, it might solve all your problems and you'll be happy, but you won't. Because the only thing that will make you happy is knowing what you are. And that's what you are in the Holy Spirit, which is beingness. And the only way you can return to that is by letting all the mess go. And again, how do you do that? You forgive yourself for not wanting to let it go. You allow and you welcome. And in that, what you really are separates itself from the mess. Now there is the mess and you as the awareness of the mess. And you can just let it go. Very good. So shall we proceed with Sherry? Yes, go ahead, Sherry. Unmute yourself. Stage is yours, Sherry. Thank you, Eli. Thank you, Keith. Um, I've been with you, Keith, for almost a year, and I want to thank you for everything that you've been teaching us. It's it's unbelievable, and it's really helped me so much. Um, I still am struggling, but uh, I do have the greatest opportunity to do my forgiveness um, and welcome welcoming the Holy Spirit in. Um, I wake up like every hour to every hour and a half with hot flashes. I'm sure some of these women understand that. And it's super frustrating. And each time I wake up, I, you know, get with Holy Spirit and I try to welcome it. But after like waking up three times, it's like, I just get so like pissed and irritated. And, and then it's like, I try to let that go. It's like, I don't know if I'm doing it wrong or if it just is going to take time of, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like sometimes it works and sometimes it makes me more frustrated. <laughs> okay. Um, so maybe Eli might mute that one in the background. Um, I'm never upset for the reason I think. So again, you're not upset because you're having hot flashes. You are upset because you think you're the body. You're upset because you think you're the person. Um, that's the reason why you're upset. And then that gets projected onto the hot flashes. <laughs> um, so when we say it doesn't work, we have to be careful what that means. See, that kind of means, um, that's kind of assuming that the problem is getting rid of my reaction to hot fl flashes. No, the problem is that you think you're a body. So, when you welcome and allow, and in the welcoming and the allowing, feel yourself as what's not the body and not the irritation or the upset or anything like that, a pure beingness, uh, then it works. And when you don't, <laughs> you're going, but I am the body. <laughs> um, well, then it's not going to work because you're staying identified as what you're not. So all of these opportunities are, are an, you know, all of these situations are an opportunity for you to choose again. And when you do, you'll have peace. And when you don't, you won't. Would that make sense? Yes, it does. And it is, and it, and it does happen sometimes like that. And I just feel so great. Like after yeah. and I'm just like in such a loving place. And you're not in a loving place because of anything you've done, except that you have fallen back into what you are, which is always a loving place. Yes. That's that's very crucial to understand. 
This is not a technique to make yourself loving and peaceful. That would be a complete misunderstanding of what we're doing. What you're doing is you're letting go of what you're not, which is thoughts and feelings, to experience the love and peace of what you always are as beingness, as a pure awareness. Um, so, so that's brilliant that you have that experience. And then when you don't and you're going, no, 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 I'm the body <laughs> and I am miserable because of the hot flashes. Um, can I welcome, can I allow and welcome all those thoughts of irritation and irritability and anger and upset and discomfort? Can I welcome them all? You know, can I, instead of closing down in them, can I open my heart before it all? And as I do, I feel what I am again. And that's it. Wash, rinse, repeat. <laughs> um, you know, in the same way, um, at the moment when I twist... At night time in my sleep, I wake up with a dart of pain and um and in exactly I'm doing the exact same process. See, you know, and so it's like, but well, what does it have to do with me as awareness? <laughs> you know, there's a body I'm aware of, there's pain I'm aware of, but but it's not me. And so it's all the time coming back to what you are as being this. Because the awareness of discomfort isn't uncomfortable. The awareness of upset isn't upset. The awareness of pain isn't in pain. There is me who is the subject. And then there is the object out there, which is separate from me, which is a body or pain or whatever else is going on. But none of it has any effect on what I am as awareness. So, because again, if we're really serious about this and if we're really serious about wanting to get to the real world, well, then that's a situation where you're observing your body as a character in the dream that's no different than any other character in the dream. But it's not you. And you tell it what to do. <laughs> um, but it's not you. Which is where Jesus was. Other people saw thought they saw Jesus on the cross, um, you know, dying. But Jesus knew he wasn't there. He was aware of a body there and he was telling it what to do. But it had nothing to do with his experience of what he was. Now, I'm not saying any of us are at that point yet and we're ready for crucifixion. Um, but I am saying that's what our that's what our process is. You know, what is the journey that takes us to there? And it's non-interference. It is non-resistance. You know, if there's pain, that it's welcomed, that it's accepted, that it's perfect. It's exactly what needs to be right now. All things work together for good, except in the ego's opinion. What could you not accept if you but knew that all things past, present and to come are gently planned by one whose only purpose is your good? So whatever is going on, whether it's hot flashes or pains in your back when you try and turn at night time or when you sit up too suddenly or when you're walking, um, it's perfect. Non-resistance. Non-interference. Allowing. Welcoming. That's the practice. And that's what brings you to the point in the real world where crucifixion of your body has got nothing to do with you. So that's just our practice. And so each time you think that you're failing, just welcome the thought that you're failing. And let it go. And you'll feel what you are as being. This. See, the thoughts are all lies. <laughs> Every last one of them is a lie. Only the beingness is true. Oh, I'm so irritated and I'm so upset because I can't get this and I just I just can't get the course. Can I welcome the thought that I can't get the course? <laughs> and in the welcome, can I let the thought go? I'm beingness. 
Cut six. Does that make sense, Sherry? Yes, thank you. And I have a lot of opportunities. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few myself at the moment. Wonderful. Wonderful. Let's welcome them. I love uh, my hot so Yes. <laughs> well, they're perfect. So your starting point is that they're absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely perfect for your journey of awakening from thinking you're a person, from the nightmare of death, the dream of death, which is thinking you're Sherry. Um, your hot flashes are absolutely perfect in that dream now um, for what awakens you from that dream. Yeah. No, I really do think they're perfect because they happen about yeah. every hour. Like my lessons, you have to every hour do your lessons. Absolutely. It's a good reminder. <laughs> yeah, I'm immensely grateful for my eight years of anxiety. And um, yeah, yeah, immensely grateful for that because uh, it was such a huge advantage that I really just couldn't relax on my forgiveness for five minutes because the anxiety was never gone. It was always there. Um, brilliant. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, Thank where you. should we go next, Eli? We can go to Diona. Go ahead. Have we lost You're Diona? Still muted. You're still muted, Diona. Okay, there we go. Um, I wanted to say, Keith, how incredibly grateful I am. It's like, you, you are just so used by the spirit in just a powerful way. And I'm just so grateful. I don't even have words to articulate how grateful I am. I can be struggling and I get on the Zoom call and it's like everything just makes sense. It's like the mind restabilizes. Yes. And it's like and the important thing is I'm not doing that yeah. to you. I'm not doing the that Holy to spirit. you. No, yes, um, in the sense that um, the only thing that makes you feel that exhilaration and peace again is that you are stopping identifying with the thoughts in your head and the emotions and you're experiencing what you are as being this. So I'm saying things that's temporarily getting you past your blocks to the awareness of love's presence, your blocks to your identity as, um, as beingness as awareness um but again anytime we feel mm -hmm. happiness or joy or hope um any of those things um there's only one reason for that and it's that because we have let go of our grasp on thoughts and feelings and thinking they're who we are and we are feeling our being this so i just want to point that out. thank you very much for the sentiment but i want you to understand that um you know because i don't want you to think that I do that for you or the Zoom calls do that for you because they don't. Mm -hmm. What does that for you is that you unhook yourself from ego thoughts and feelings and you experience your beingness and suddenly you're like, oh my God, things are okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the that reminder because that's the truth. Yes. Because I, I experience that even when I'm not on the call, I have, yeah. it, it, it seems like I go through these periods where I'm flying and then I nosedive. And yeah, it and seems when, like when you're I flying, know. yeah, and when you're yeah. flying, you know the beingness that you are, and when you nose dive, you don't. There's no beingness there anymore. You're identified with the insane voice talking to it in itself in your head, thinking it's you. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. But it it and feels so, like when everything is up, like yeah. when a lot of stuff is up at once, it feels mm -hmm. overwhelming and. It's like there's a panic. It kind of goes yeah. through the body. But as wow. I'm listening so, wow. to the truth. I, I'm panicking. Can I welcome that panic? Can I really not interfere with it? Can I allow that panic to be exactly what it is? Can I welcome that panic? And if I can, I'm not the panic anymore. I've separated myself from the ego. I am the awareness of the panic. The panic is there, but I'm here. I am the one that's aware of the panic. And from there, the panic dissolves. Yeah, so so none of us are ever stuck. The answer is always complete non-interference, complete non-resistance, 
absolute allowing, absolute welcoming of what is. <laughs> ah, now I separate out from the madness. I thought I was the madness. Ah, now I separate out from the madness and I'm the one that's aware of the madness. And from here, I can let it go or watch it dissolve. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's just practice. Yeah. Just keep coming back, keep stepping back. Until you get to the real world. <laughs> Okay. Just welcoming the darkness until you until you're in the real world and there's no more thoughts or feelings. There's just omniscience. It's still mind. It's still mind mm -hmm. with no thoughts and feelings. Um, pure beingness and and omniscience expressing itself as whatever you need to know in any given situation. Yeah. Thank you, Keith. Pleasure. You. What should we do next, Eli? We can go, we have a few questions in the chat, but let's uh, let V ha ask her question and we'll go to the chat. Oh. Hi. Hi, V. Uh, thank you, Eli. Hi, Keith. So I just wanted to um, share an experience in case that would be helpful in, into uh, how to welcome. <laughs> so I had an issue with a store and I had to go back to the store a few times in the week. And I really brought a lot of anxiety and discomfort in me and pain. And um, as I and I was trying to practice, you know, the forgiveness practice. And um, there I am waiting for a manager to come and talk to me. And then uh, I have all this turmoil inside. And then um, I'm thinking, okay, welcome, welcome this. Well, <laughs> and then it's it says no, no, I'm not welcoming anything. There's too much. It's too much. So then I uh, I remember my desire. So I said, oh, okay. So am I willing to welcome? And the answer is still a no. And then am I willing to be willing to welcome the emotion, the discomfort right now? It's very hard to bear. Am I willing to be willing? And then that question, I could say honestly, yes. I said, yes, I'm willing to be willing because why? Because I want to heal my mind. This is my opportunity. This is my next step towards healing. I don't want to let it go. So I'm truly willing to be willing. And once I <laughs> once I said yes to this, it's as if like um, I knew that this was the meaning of my life. I'm here to undo, you know, this guilt. That's that's all that matters i was still very anxious and scared the v character was still like having this very high discomfort but somehow there was a knowing that everything was the way it was supposed to be in the big scheme of of life <laughs> so I, I heard sherry talking about her hot flash i think it's very hard to to um to welcome certain things so maybe asking ourselves am i willing to be willing to accept and then it makes it, a, it opens like a little crack in the door there's a little bit of light and that's all we need to uh, um to process <laughs> very good v thank you for sharing that and it's just another way of saying what i was saying in the sense that how am i supposed to welcome this pain um well i i look at how much i don't want to accept it and I completely forgive myself. So it's another way of saying that. It's just another way of saying it. And so thanks for sharing that because hearing these things from many different angles is the important thing. That's the opening. As you say, that's the crack that brings the light in. Um, you know, you know, how do I how do I let go of these thoughts and feelings about unemployment and wondering how do I feed my family and what's going to happen and how do I let it go? I look at how much I don't want to let it go and I don't judge myself. I completely forgive myself for it. You know, so again, standing in the shop and all the anxieties going on, how do I welcome this? Well, what I do is I look at how much I don't want to welcome it and I completely forgive myself for it. And the minute I do that, I'm not the mess anymore. There's the mess there. I'm the one that's aware of the mess. So thanks for that, B. It was it's another way of saying the same thing, and those things are important. So thanks a million for sharing. 
what should we do next do you like thank you i think we should go to the chat this is from okay. becky what if you forget your beingness and fall into ego where you react to someone in ways that upset upset them it's not okay to do that so should you apologize as an ego Yeah, I mean, of course. You do what's loving. You know, and I think we don't even need to return to the Holy Spirit to know what's loving to say that you apologize for something you did that was unkind. Um, but can I welcome my guilt over that? Can I allow it? Because you see, you're not guilty over that. I'm never upset for the reason I think. So you're not upset because you were mean to someone. Um, you're upset because you think you're an ego. And you're projecting that onto what your body did. So again, when I'm like, oh my God, you know, there, there I went again. <laughs> I slipped. I was an ego. I exploded all over everyone. I vomited all my projections onto them. Look what I did. Um, can I welcome the guilt over that? Can I allow it to be there? Can I do nothing with it? Can I be with it? Can I not interfere with it? And when I do that, then I separate myself from the guilt. Because you as beingness do not know guilt. It's no guilt in being this. It's no guilt in the Holy Spirit. So, and then as you remember what you are as beingness, you go, well, can I just let that go? If it's still there, most times when you go back to your beingness, it'll just dissolve. Um, but if it's still there and you can feel yourself as beingness, it's like, well, can I let those ego thoughts go to experience beingness, stillness? A non-conceptual mind. Peace. And I mean, once you've done that, you're going to do whatever is loving in the situation anyway, which may very well be saying to someone, listen, I'm so sorry I did that. You caught me at a bad moment. I apologize. No big deal. Hope that makes sense. Anything else in the chat box, Eli? Yes, this is from Yane says, I have a function God would have filled. Is letting go our function? Okay, well, our function um, is, um, our function is is extending God, creation. Uh, that's our real function. Um, but as long as we are, as long as we have an identification as a separate self, as a body and an insane voice talking to itself, then really our function here is forgiveness. So it's really just healing our mind in order to get back to our real function, which is the extension of God creation. So yeah, for now, your function is, can you allow and welcome everything your ego is doing so you can experience yourself as what's not ego and let go of ego? Yeah, that's your function. Uh, anything else, Eli? Yes, this is from Tanya. Can you please clarify further the distinction between an experience seeming real versus actually being real? Everything's happening in your mind. So I mean, nothing's real. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so um, the only thing that's real, or at least reflects reality in consciousness, is your beingness. That's all that's real. So, I mean, if it's a question of, did someone just, you know, 
put me down or did I just imagine it? Well, the problem isn't whether someone put you down or you just imagined it. The problem is that you think you are something that can be put down. An ego. One problem, one solution. <laughs> your one problem <laughs> is that you think you're a separate thing, an ego, a person, a body and an insane voice talking to itself. And the one solution is that you undo that mistaken identification um, in order to know what you are in the Holy Spirit, which is a beingness, which is awareness. Um, so it really doesn't matter <laughs> what degree of reality or reality has. Um, you only have one problem and there's one solution. So you undo your mistaken identification as the ego to realize that you are oneness and there's no problem and you can't be put down and nobody's put you down and all is well. Anything else in the chat box, Eli? Yes, we have two more in the chat and we have Susan with her hand up. So if you want to and throw, we'll draw a, a line, line under, under that. that. We will, yeah. we will. Thank you, Eli. Yeah, okay. Uh, so Joyce says, um, why do some people seem to have a much harder time letting go and allowing as other people, even core students? I think you have to have, I think it's much easier to work with this when you have suffered sufficiently, when you've reached your pain threshold. Um, where you have reached the understanding that, you know, you've let go of the delusion that if I can just manipulate the world a certain way, I can finally have this happiness. Um, you know, I, I think it's when you've dropped all that and you realize that it's a wild goose chase, it's never worked and it's not going to work, that happiness isn't out there. Um, I think it's a much easier time than working with this letting go. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, we all have a different atonement path, um, you know, and everyone has a different starting place. And, um, and you can't really, you can't really compare like with like, it's like comparing apples with oranges. Um, but wherever you're at, we begin. I'm never upset for the reason I think. So can I welcome the upset of being a separate self? Can I allow it to be there? Can I not judge it? Can I not interfere it? Can I totally welcome it? And if I do, I'll separate from it. I feel myself as awareness. So that's where we all begin. So it doesn't matter how far advanced you are or whether you're just starting. Whatever else you can learn this, I am never upset for the reason I think. I'm upset because I don't know I'm being this. I think I'm a person. Let me welcome whatever the person's doing in order to know myself as being this. Another question in the chat box, Eli? Yes, uh, this will be the final chat box question, and it's from Rich. So do we use magic? Um, yes. Jesus tells us in chapter two um, that magic isn't sinful or evil <laughs> or anything like it. Um, and he says that as long as we have a fear and as long as we think we are the body, um, then the last thing we need is the fear of throwing a maybe medicine and medical help so he's going go and go ahead and do that um but he does tell us in the course that um if your body is sick it's because you have projected it as being sick <laughs> uh there's been a decision to punish yourself at an unconscious level for your guilt um and if your body gets better it's not because of medicine or medical treatment. It's because on some level you made a decision uh, that the body was going to get better. 
So the way Ken would have explained it, he says, is that you are in the cinema with Jesus of the Holy Spirit. In other words, you are awareness. You're feeling your beingness. And you're watching a movie of a body that is made itself sick, <laughs> that is sick, <laughs> that's going for medical treatment, that's taking medicine, and that's going to get better or not. Um, and you understand that it has nothing to do with what you are as beingness. So that's our middle ground. You know, so Jesus isn't saying don't use ma magic. Um, he's saying choose the choose the miracle at the same time as the magic. And then the miracle can express itself through the magic. So no, we, we, we don't we don't do that. I mean, look, there is the implication in the course that at some point in time, um, when you completely know yourself as beingness, that you project the body any way you want to. You know, that's the ultimate implication of the course. Jesus is saying, well, you know, you reach the point where you could, you know, he talks about himself when he's talking to Helen about, um, about the resurrection. And he tells Helen, well, you know, I just made another body. <laughs> <laughs> so when we get in touch with what we are as beingness and that everything is a projection of your mind well you can project whatever you want um but you know there's nobody starting off at that point and so jesus is saying until you get beyond fear and until you know yourself as that you know um beingness and that oneness and as the dreamer of the dream the one that's projecting it all uh, until you get to that place then magic is fine but just in your mind know that whether you get better or not is a decision that the mind has made it's not really got anything to do with the um the circumstances hope that makes sense so shall we go to susan marie yes and she will be your last Perfect. go ahead susan hi keith um can you hear me okay we can. Awesome. Um, what you just spoke about le leads beautifully into what I was about to, to share in my own experience in the realization of who I am in truth and not who I think I am. Um, realizing that in our awareness of being human, we make certain agreements and we have certain beliefs and there's collective beliefs and structures that we apply to the dream of ourselves as human in the body. And so I have an understanding that my body will reflect to me the things that I have agreed to, unaware, um, that might, have, might be created in the body and come up to be seen. And so I have my family doctor trained to say to me, if I have something up here in the body, when I go to her, she says, it appears as though you have, and then she fills in the blank. And in this one instance, um, I had chest pain, my lungs were filling with fluid, went to the doctor, and she said, it appears you are in congestive heart failure. And I said, thank you. She made all the necessary appointments. I went home, went into stillness and asked Holy Spirit, how did I create this? What is the truth underneath the suffering? And what is the foundation of the suffering? And what I heard was um, congestive heart failure is broken heart, which can oh, never be nice. true because that which you are, the eternal heart can yes. never be broken. And so I said, show me all the ways in my life where I believe that my heart was broken. And it began, you know, in the womb and at every opportunity, at every appearance of a thought that I agreed to that my heart was broken. Um, I had a choice in those moments to accept the story as true or that the eternal that I am can never have a broken heart. And at the end of it all, I had no more congestive heart failure. Very good completely healed in a matter of hours with being willing to look at the story that I was telling myself about why I was suffering and to believe that I 
had a choice to accept it because the doctor said it was there. And I've seen this um, in, in assisting others where they believe the evidence of what the body is showing as more real than the eternal they are that transcends all of that. So it just, um, you know, I often say like this meat suit, this human body is not who I am. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you very much for sharing. Um, and again, we're, we're not giving people the advice that you ignore medical um, advice or anything no, like that. But we are saying that you can choose the miracle alongside whatever's going on medically. And that's, you know, sounds like what you've done there. And that's yeah. wonderful. That's a lovely outcome. Perfect. Right, guys, thank you very much for your attention. And um, we shall all catch up in the group during the week. If you're listening to the podcast, you can check out the website on acimwithkeith.com to learn more about the podcast and um, private coaching and to listen to the podcast there and download the podcast to listen offline if you wish. Uh, so thank you very much, guys. Have a great Sunday. Thank, thank you. you so much, thank Keith. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.